All right, I think we're ready to go, and we'll get started so that everyone can go out and have some fun. Uh, this is the multilingual makeover session. We're going to compare Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. And just want to say hello in whatever language that you would like to choose today. And Amy? Yeah, hi. We're at Hook 42. And um, my name is Amy Degnan. I'm the CEO and Drupal architect from Hook 42. I've been doing Drupal for a little over eight years now and many, many years in multilingual and other content management systems. And this is Kristen. Uh, I'm Kristen, and uh, I've uh, been working with Drupal since 2004 and doing architecture and multilingual since uh, Drupal 5. Um, I wrote the Drupal 7 multi -site, multilingual sites book, and Amy's working on the Drupal 8 one, and she's almost done. Almost done. <laughs> Before this. Yeah. All right. So before we get uh, further into this, we want to know a little bit about the audience here. Um, before actually I, we ask this, who was in the last session? Show of hands. OK, so a few oh, of you. Awesome. So th there will be a little bit of overlap for, for some of that, but um, hopefully you'll still pick up some new things. Who here is a newbie to Drupal? Maybe the last year-ish or so, OK? Intermediate, maybe been doing Drupal for a couple years or so. OK, quite a number. Uh, veteran, been doing Drupal for a long time. All right, <laughs> great. Uh, who's more on the site building side? Click, clicking through the interface, a lot of you. Uh, project management, oh good, fair number. Theming, more on the theming side, a few of you. Uh, more on back end, developer, coding, whoa, OK. Big, okay. lots of hands. So a lot of you, um, if you miss this, Previous session, you should check that out. Um, and then who kind of does everything? You're maybe freelancing or just yeah. do, do, do all, the, wow, <laughs> lots of you. It's amazing. And who here speaks more than one language? Whoa, impressive, actually. Try That's been. a lot. Um, I speak English, sometimes not that well. Uh, Amy speaks a little bit of other things. <laughs> I shouldn't say those things up here. <laughs> OK, <laughs> exactly. All right. So now we want to get a sense of what Drupal you're using. So Drupal 7, show of hands. I would imagine if your hand's not up, that would be interesting. Uh, all right, there we go. Uh, Drupal 8. Oh, a fair number. OK, cool. Right, I'm OK, do this one. yeah. And um, so it looks like um, a lot of people here are looking to use Drupal 8, correct? All right, and we're planning there. Um, and for those who were in um, Gabor's session, uh, we're going to cover the four pillars of multilingual quickly again, um, but we'll get into it those quickly. So first of all, there's language. Then there's the user interface. Then content. And then config. And we'll go into detail through the deck on all of these different areas. So let's talk about language. So what's language? I think they're like little codes and stuff. Um, well, first of all, language is not just the language itself, but it's also defined as both language and region, because you can be speaking French in Canada, and you can be speaking French in France, and it could be two very different things. So in um, both systems, in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, there's going to be some similarities between the systems, and there's going to be some differences. So we'll go over some of, uh, some of both of those things. So for language, um, you're going to find some similar things between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. You're going to be able to add languages, edit languages, remove them. There'll be already pre-configured languages, like French and English and German, so forth. And then you can create custom languages if you needed a Fr France-specific French um, or a, you know Australian version of English. You can also associate content with a language. So you can have a node in Spanish and a node in English and a node in German. And then there are things called detection and selection, which basically lets you lets Drupal know um, how to determine the language that should be shown. 
So these are very similar conceptually between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, and there are ways of configuring both systems so that you can detect based on the URL, which is typically the most common, um, but you can also detect based on um, a user session or um, the user object itself or the browser. And then there's some defaults that are, you know, can fall back to, um, so it's, the nomenclature is a little different between the two systems, but essentially at the, at the end you have this kind of um, default language or selected language that you can choose. And what are the differences? So for those that were in the previous session, um, you saw that, you know, you could really tell that uh, Drupal 7 language was an, over, an afterthought, um, and it was just really bolted on. There's a locale module that is part of core in Drupal 7, and that has the language capability. The, the naming's a little funny, um, but that's the way it was, because it was just kind of uh, an afterthought. And in Drupal 8, it's language first and language everywhere. You have the language module. It's, it's basically split from the locale module, historically. The language is in the installer, so it truly is language first. Um, and it really helps, uh, helps user, like user adoption of Drupal, and it helps administrators who don't understand English to be able to install in their own language. You can remove English if you need to which is awesome. And you can also translate in English, so your login can be sign in. And the URL detection is enabled. And by, by default. By default, yes. <laughs> and also the administration language is also there. And it also provides better browser detection and better administration uh, UX and enhanced view support. It's pretty awesome. We've got a lot of stuff, and this is just at the base language support. And we didn't include everything, and so the dot, 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 you know, <laughs> there's a lot more stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, it's amazingly exciting. All right, so, you know, so language is an afterthought in Drupal 7, and to give you an idea of how that works, here's a, a short video of the installer in Drupal 7. Um, so if you're installing in Drupal 7 and you try to figure out what's going on, it's saying, oh, well, there's English, but what about me? Um, you try to figure out what I'm supposed to do, and it gives you kind of some text, and you're kind of confused, because maybe you've never even used Drupal before, and it's telling I have to go someplace else and do some things, and But I'm, I don't speak English. And I don't even speak English, oh. and maybe I don't even know how to read this. <laughs> um, so it's a little frustrating, and not the best uh, user experience. So that is Drupal 7 uh, out of the box. And language is first in Drupal 8. So you can see here, the first thing that you do on install is choose the, in the language that you're installing to. And the language, all of the languages are in the native language. You can find it. So we're going to choose French and save and continue. And at this point, at this point, it's thinking. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna choose the standard installation, but look at what it did. It said, you have chosen French, I'm gonna switch the interface right at the upfront uh, moment so I can make informed choices in my own language. And, um, it's, sorry, it's, okay, so at this point, I've chosen to do the installation. It's gonna install modules, but right after this, it's going to actually go out to localization and, and pull in all of the different translated strings like Gabor was talking in the, the previous session. And notice how many modules it's, it's loading. It's 42, which yes. is the answer to everything. <laughs> We're gonna hook into that. <laughs> yeah, so what this is, it, it really bootstraps non-English users' adoption to Drupal. And um, it really goes hand in hand. And you don't have to have English to have a Drupal site, which is amazing for those that are not just English speakers. Right, so. and to play into um, the removing English, if you do just install in a different language, it will actually remove English by default because you might want a, just a language-specific site. Right. So you can just install in French and just only deal with French. And you know, if it, ha it has a translation, then that's what it's gonna show you. Right. So now, this, at this point, it's actually 
Down it's talking you. to localized.drupal.org and it's grabbing additional translations at this point. Right, and it's all about making it easy and clear uh, about managing the language that you want to manage. So. All right. And it's almost done. It's <laughs> almost done. But what happens is if you do install in a different language, uh, a couple of modules are enabled uh, beyond just the base label uh, language support. Um, and it will, by default, uh, select choose automatic updates for it because that will help uh, the system go out and download the translations from localized.drupal.org. All right. So we now we have a new, new Drupal 8 site, and it's all the interface is in French, just like we wanted it. So it's just way, way better. C'est magnifique. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, if we think about it, we've got language in Drupal 8, a uh, Drupal 7, um, and it was an afterthought, and so basically you took Drupal 7 and you kind of speared on this language stuff on top, and you're like, yeah, well, it's, and it's a little spotty and whatever, but you know, it kind of works, and we're gonna just call that good enough. It's technically there, it's yeah. just a little smeary. But in Drupal 8, when you add language, it's seamless, and you know it's Drupal 8, but you have language and it all goes together. It's very smooth. Okay, so that's your foundation. You've got your language support, and it's just a lot better um, in Drupal 8 versus Drupal 7. Now we're gonna talk about something that's called the interface in Drupal, and this might seem a little strange, but these, these four buckets of, of things that we talk about, and they're all handled slightly differently for translation um, and localization, and that's why they're, they're bucketed out. So, for an interface, uh, what is an interface? In terms of Drupal, we're talking about text that is coming from code. So that code might be a module or a theme or distribution, and when you take in that text from that code, that text is shown somewhere on the site. In this case, you know, maybe it's the, the, the tab text or the field label, that kind of thing. So in Drupal 7, this was done with the T function, and uh, you just pass it, and so if you're a module developer, and there were a lot of developers in the house, even if you don't think your site's gonna be multilingual, it's always good um, best practice to pass your text through a T function when you're developing. In Drupal 7, you do that just with the T function. In Drupal 8, things have changed with dependency injection, and we do something slightly different, but the, conceptually, it's pretty much the same. So what are the similarities? So first of all, like Kristen just covered, the T function is pretty similar to the new Drupal 8 version um, as you apply it in most common use cases. The import process of the translations is also very similar. Um, the export process it goes with the import process is also very similar. And um, we, they also heavily use community translation from localized.drupal.org. All right, so now a bit about the differences between the two. Uh, in Drupal 7, in order to handle the interface, there tend to to be several modules involved. Locale, like we mentioned, is a core module, and so we'd always install that. Localization update is a contrib module or community module, and that one um, you should install because it makes things much easier. If you don't install it, you have to do a lot of manual processing in order to get your interface strings uh, translated to these you know, pretty standard um, translations that are available on this other website, the localized.drupal.org. Uh, optionally, there's string overrides, which um, you don't have to use on a multilingual site, but you can, and that lets you translate from English to English if you would like. Log in to sign out that kind, or sign, yeah, log out to sign out that kind of thing. Um, or it actually you can use it for multilingual as well. Uh, and then there's this admin interface module, which again is an optional thing, but a lot of people use it which if I'm managing a Japanese site and I don't know anything about Japanese, I can use admin language 
to say, I speak English, please show whatever you can in English to me because I don't speak this other language. And in Drupal 8, one module, one, one. And you get so much more. Um, you get automated, automatic, uh, I can't talk, it's the end of the day. Woo, <laughs> okay. You get automatic updates and also um, the updates are done with batch processing, so you don't have any timeouts or anything. You get translatable English, which replaces the string overrides. You have your admin language, which replaces the admin language module. You have a better translate page. So who's familiar with the translate page? Yeah, and I call it the translate page because it's slash translate, right? So um, yeah, and is that it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, there's more, but this is what we all right, so, so handling um, these interface strings, so the text coming from these, the code, uh, is, it's a little bit cumbersome in Drupal 7. You have this you know, page you can go to and you can search for strings. Um, one thing to keep in mind for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is it's case sensitive and that actually gets a lot of people. Make sure you always do case sensitive text when you're searching. So um, this can also throw people off if in your theme, uh, your themer has changed your case, maybe to all lowercase or all uppercase and that kind of thing. So you're going to probably want to right click, inspect element, actually grab that text exactly as it is when you're searching. Um, but if, if I needed to change all of the, you know, translate all of the text that was related to the word log, L-O-G, capital L-O-G, you know, I could search for that and I would end up with a number of, of strings and then I'd have to go in one by one and edit each one. Now in Drupal 8, you have a lot less clicking and it's a lot more elegant. So here you can see everything that comes up for log comes up without having to click an edit button. Um, so you can quickly apply many, many translations that apply to your search results. Um, also, this, um, this is a view. Uh, and so you can extend out your translation searches through not just the everything, but you can really isolate it to your customized translations, the translations from localized.drupal.org and things that are not translated at all. Okay, so if we, you know, we start off with our language support. In D7, it's a little bit smeary and not so great. In D8, it's much more unified. And now we're going to add on our interface. Well, you know, well, I don't know, I kind of like the 80s. I was kind of, you know, a teenager in the 80s. So for D7, I'm gonna go with the brick phone because, you know, it works. I can communicate and interface with the world and it's, but, you know, uh, maybe it's not the best, but it's functional. But, you know, we're in the present and toward the future and I have a smartphone it is strong, it is sleek and powerful, and boy, is it far less heavy than your brick phone, brick but phone. it does so much more, and it is amazing. And that's Drupal 8 multilingual. All right, so that's a bit about the differences and similarities for interface um, between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So a lot of what's going to happen is content. So let's talk about content. In Drupal 7, there are lots of things called content. Um, nodes, comments, users, taxonomy turns, and custom entities. And so what happened was in previous versions of Drupal, Drupal 6 and before, we had nodes and then people would be like, oh, well, nodes can use CCK and they could have fields. I really like fields. I want my users to have fields and that's so awesome. And so they would use user node and make their users nodes so they could add fields. And then in D7, they're like, wow, we should be able to start making people add fields to things. So then they introduced entities in Drupal 7. But it was, you know, kind of, not fully baked, you know, so some things were entities and other things were just what they were before. Um, so basically, you know, these are the types of things that are considered content in Drupal 7. But content in Drupal 8 is far more unified. It's the same as Drupal 7, but plus, blocks are now content instead of this weird thing that it used to be. 
menu items, contact messages, and your custom content entities. So those custom content entities we saw before in creation of, with your API, you can set them up to be configurably translated, and it just surfaces to the content translation, translation system. So there are some similarities between the two systems. Um, so we have this idea of a translate tab where it's pretty obvious, you know, if you set things up so that you can translate, there's a tab, you're you know, looking at a particular piece, a piece of content and there's a translate tab and that's where you go to do your translations. So that concept has, has, is the same between the two. And the other thing is um, in Drupal 7 there were two ways to be able to translate nodes in particular. Uh, there was the core way of doing it, which was node translation or content translation, however you want to call it. And then there was entity translation, was a you know a contrib module, but it was heavily used as well. So uh, conceptually, you can think of the D8 method for translating content is very similar to the way D7 was doing it with entity translation, plus a few other modules to tack onto there. And the differences are, so in D7, uh, lots of hun hunting and pecking, uh, a lot of modules, and I haven't even listed them all. So like I mentioned, content translation, which is in core, there's this whole suite of internationalization modules that you, know, you, you know, tend to use that have, um, you know, there's a, I don't know, 20 modules in there or something like that. And then you could also use entity translation, and sometimes people use both content, tra content translation and entity translation at the same time, which is super confusing. That's confusing. Yeah, and then the title module is interesting because the way that Drupal 7 is set up, titles uh, of nodes in Drupal 7 are properties. Uh, they're not fields. So if you were to use entity translation for node content in Drupal 7, um, by itself, you would not be able to translate the title, which is kind of important, I would uh, think. I think so. So yeah. you tack on this other module called the title module just because that's just the way we roll. Um, and, you know, once you add enough modules and configure enough thing, then, you know, it's pretty much going to work. So, um, yeah. Uh, in Drupal 8, there's one config page to rule them all. So your hunting and pecking is focused. There is no hunting and pecking. The clicking is lighter, and my wrist is better. There's one module, one module. It's the content translation module, and it is in core. You don't have to go through all of the contrib and figure out which modules do I need, which ones are relevant. And um, you, it also comes with inline editing. It's amazing, and it, it makes it so much easier for your translation team to jump in. Uh, you have block visibility, so blocks can have multiple blocks on the page, but also visible, you can have one block on, multiple times on the page, and you can have visibility based on language. And you can have fallback per entity, which is amazingly powerful. All right, so basically, you get carpal tunnel in Drupal 7 because you're gonna be <laughs> clicking a lot. Uh, so here's an example. We're going to start off, we're going to do entity translation. So we go to the entity translation configuration page and we're going to translate nodes. So we make sure that that's selected. Then we have to actually go to a particular content type that we want to use. Uh, we want to be able to translate and make sure that we enable it with field translation, which is the same as entity translation, and then we save that. Then we need to go to every single field that we would like to be able to translate. And I didn't even talk, well, I mentioned the title module. If you in, in, install the title module, you'll see that little replace at the corner there that you have to click that and make sure that you click that so that the title is translatable. But then for every single field for your content type, you need to go in and make sure that you do field translation and enable it. If you have big, a lot of content types and a lot of fields, this is a pretty tedious process. Repeat, 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 and you're gonna be in a lot of pain. Kristen, your finger is strong, <laughs> and your wrists are strong. 
Who yeah. else has strong fingers and wrists in here? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Everybody All right. So, raise their hand for Drupal. You know, you can click a lot in Drupal, and you know, a little clicking's not so bad, but you know, people that have done features configuration yeah. know very well, or permissions, you know, you know all about the clicky click. All right. Oh, but Drupal 8 is so much easier, and it's a breath of fresh air. You go to one place, you see all of the different configurable content types for translation at the end, at the top. You click a content type, enable translation. You can see pretty much everything by best use cases are, are selected as default for translation. Um, also image was, uh, the image file itself was not selected to be translated because it's not an often use case. It's, it's not the default use case to actually switch the image. Um, but it's all on one page and you can see um, you can select all the different types of content. And this is actually a great summary of all the types of content that are available. And then there's more. It depends on which modules you enable on your core site. All right. So basically, we've got our language in Drupal 7. It's a little smeary. We've got our brick phone, you know, so that we can interface with the outside world. And then we've got to put on some multilingual clothes for our content, right? Yeah, our so content is our body, yeah, so. <laughs> our goal for our multilingual content clothes is we want long pants and long sleeves, all right? That's our goal, in order to be fully clothed and be able to translate all of our content. So, given it's Drupal 7, why not put some, you know, put some shorts on first because you have to in, you have to install the shorts module. Yeah, sure, that sounds good. Okay, and then we'll put our you know we'll put our short sleeves on because well I guess we have to. Well, the short sleeves are required, right? By the shorts module. Or the the short. Okay, yes. Okay. All sure. oh, right. That, okay. That's well, cool. I guess okay. that kind of makes sense. There's short sleeve short. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, you know we're gonna put some shoes on. They don't quite match, but you know they sort of work. So we'll do that. And then we're going to actually, you know, put our long pants on because, well. You have to install the long pants module to make sure that you have long pants and that is, extends the short pants module. And we'll add our sleeves on. Add our long sleeves, okay. I'm getting kind of cold okay. anyway. Well, so, you have sure. to actually go and find the right well, long yeah, sleeves module. I, I looked around, I think this one might be the right one. Okay. So now we've got. Oh, I forgot my patches. Yeah, well, it needs you have to, to patch a lot of modules. Oh, here, let know, me help so you we'll, with that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, great. So wait, wait. I think I forgot one thing. The title module. Okay, I need a. I need a vest. Where is Larry Garfield? We need a vest. <laughs> I don't have a vest. But we'll, we'll pretend this is a vest. Okay, that'll work. All right. Okay. <laughs> Ah, I got my brick phone. Um, I've got now. I've got my long pants and my long sleeves. Right? Okay, we got there. <sighs> yeah, but you're ready. You're ready to translate your content, right? Right. Okay. That's good. But boy, that was hard. For a Drupal eight, it's sleek. It's one module. It's one outfit. It's the future. It's not the red shirt. <laughs> it will survive. But you can see we install one module. It's sleek, it's elegant, it's functional, it's, it's the future. All and right. boy, was that faster. <laughs> this is the last session of the day, so hopefully we're keeping you awake. <laughs> All right, so that was content. Um, we're gonna, now we're gonna talk about kind of the last bucket, the last pillar of, of multilingual, and we're gonna talk a bit about config. So config is a lot of things. It's like all the other stuff, which is not a great technical answer, but um, if you're understanding the, the content theory and, um, and interface, then it is contact categories, content type settings, it's like the labels around the settings, it's the field settings, menus, roles, site info, user mails, vocabularies, it's the structure to your content. Um, so you're, it's not the terms, it's the vocabulary. Um, so it's anything that's not the interface or content. Okay, and so in terms of the similarities um, in this config bucket, not a lot, and we'll see why in a minute. Uh, difference on, the differences between them. 
So in Drupal 7, we have a, a lot of inconsistent handling of config, and that's uh, because config is handled in a lot of different ways. So that requires a lot of different types of modules in order to handle the configuration. And there's a lot of dots I could have added to this because it just goes on and on and on. But um, if you want to translate blocks, blocks are not content in Drupal 7, use the block languages module, which is from the internationalization suite. If you want to translate menus, use the menu translation module from the internationalization suite. Um, and so forth and so on. So, you know, site configuration, like the, the site name or the site slogan, then you use the variable translation module, which has several sub-modules you have to install, like variable and variable schema and so forth. So it, it's, it's quite daunting. There's a lot of modules going on. But in Drupal 8, there's one unified configuration page. Previously, it was so hard to find where all these things, you had to dig down deep and the, um, the interface to actually get to the, the places where you do configuration translation wasn't consistent. Um, here you have one, one module that you have to enable. Um, that's glorious. There's so many, and, and it's so consistent. It makes it faster and easier to learn and faster to translate and manage. Um, you're, you store language in each YAML file, and the really cool thing about this is you can export it and check it into your Git. And then you have backups and you can deploy it through multiple like production environment, multiple environments for testing. You can test it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, basically configuration translation is consistent with the rest of the system. So for content, we have a translate tab. And so when we see that, we know we can click on it and we can go and translate com uh, content. Uh, for configuration, you go and you have to go find where that configuration lives, and then there's a, another type of interface, which is different. So in this case, you know, we've got three languages installed, so we're seeing the three languages side by side on the same page. If you had 40 languages installed, you would see all 40 languages side by side on this page, and it can get a little bit overwhelming. And it's also inconsistent with how the, um, the content translation is handled. In Drupal 8, the team, the, the, the Drupal 8 team, the UI and the, the multilingual initiative, really focused on making sure that the interfaces are consistent so you can actually find where all the translation system, the, the translation systems are. So you'll see that the, the interface is far more consistent and it's easier to train yourself and constant translators. And the configuration translation page has one unified page in D8. So perhaps um, you can see here, you can either have list all the fields for config translation or you can go directly to the translate page for those things that just have one, those, those config translations that just have one item, like the system information. And so you can just quickly click translate, you update the translation, save translation, and there it goes. And you can see that you have now had your system configuration without hunting and pecking, without trying to find all the different things and without trying to find like, oh, the variable information is tucked in this like node area. Like, how do I know to look there? I look at my like my, my navigation menus for this. So it's completely consistent and, and so much easier. All right. So we have our language, we've got our interface, we've got our, our clothing of our content with whatever patches we needed to add to make sure we're all good. And then we want to start adding our configuration support on top of that. Um, I don't have a fanny pack. It's uh, <laughs> maybe boxed up somewhere in my, you know, 80s gear. Um, so, you know, we add a fanny pack to make sure we're, we can store stuff. And, you know, couldn't find a Devo hat either, but okay, we're gonna add on some more <laughs> configuration support and then we're, we're good to go. Okay. But wow, look at that. In Drupal 8, I just accessorize. That's easy. I have one page. <laughs> it's strong. Boop, boop. All right. 
So we'll talk a bit about extensions. And this falls outside of the core realm. So, so far we've been talking, except for Drupal 7, which I had to add on a gazillion things, all of the Drupal 8 stuff we've been talking about is in core, and that's super important to understand. It's all baked in. So now we'll talk a little bit about the things that aren't baked in. Right, so some of the uh, common extensions are search, uh, media management, uh, SEO support, analytics, uh, integrations to translation management systems like Lingotech, and then also the translation management tool, the TMGMT module. I always have to make sure I get the right letter. TMGMT, which we nicknamed the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle module. Which and our clients call it the Turtle module now. Yeah. So it's, it's quite handy. Um, All right. And then okay. TMGMT will give you plugins to other vendors that have uh, translation services. And they'll allow additional exports of different files. Like both versions of Drupal by default use PO files for importing and exporting, but then you can support XLIF and HTML and other types of exports using the TMGMT module. And then whether or not these you know, community modules have support in D7 or D8 um, really depends on you know, the state of the module. Um, so best practice, at least for Drupal 7 for now, would be you go into the issue queue, you can search for I18N or multilingual or translation, and you'll typically come across something. Um, if, if maybe on the project page it actually says it supports it, which is great, but if you're not sure, it's some obscure module you can go in and try to do some, some hunting and pecking. So here's a real <laughs> example of a Drupal 7 multilingual site that we have done very recently. This was done in the last few months. And I did an inventory to see, well, what's going on? Like, how much stuff are we using? This was a fairly complex site, so this is, you know, your mileage will vary. This is not a, just a brochure site. This is pretty complex. We're using things like field collections, which should make you shudder a little bit if you're doing multilingual. Um, so in this case, for Drupal 7, we had 28 community or contrib modules, uh, two custom multilingual modules that we did in order to support some things that weren't really probably something we would contrib back. They were very uh, particular to the site. And we actually had to use at least 12, I kind of lost, I mean, we had them all there, but you know, last count, it was 12 patches, um, three of which, I think, three or four of which we had actually yeah. contributed to and got back to Drupal.org. And um, for field collections and entity translation and TMGMT and Translation that kind of, of thing. nested field collections. Yeah, <laughs> so just to get an idea of what kind of modules we're using, there's a laundry list here, lots of, you know, IETN modules, we've got the TMGMT stuff, with some SEO related things and that kind of stuff, um, fallbacks and yeah. so you know this was a pretty rich you know site, uh, gives you an idea of, of the, the complexity that you can run into. But we haven't even extended it with search yet. And Doesn't it? Yeah, this crazy. is not even have search. Yeah. Yet. But if if it was Drupal 8, 18 out of those 23 community modules are already handled by Core. So just think of the wonderful impact to your site, like in performance. You don't have to have all that overhead running. One is in contrib, and five are roughly to be determined. And to get a snapshot of what that looks like, click the button. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so you can take a, you can see now these are the, the the 18 out of 23 that are actually handled by core are the gray ones. There are some things like language domains and XML sitemap is moving and what's going on. Those are all basically to be determined and then um, one is actually in contrib right now which is the language fallback support. All right, so if we look you know, uh, at these, so if you go to the modules page on drupal.org, you can search for multilingual modules and you'll get over 100, I don't even remember last count, 130, 150, yeah. and there's a lots of modules that, you know, that, that say that they're somehow related to multilingual. Not all of them are specifically multilingual, but maybe they support multilingual, that kind of thing. But I looked and I tried to say, okay, if we pare this down to ones that are really, really supporting multilingual, and there's at least 38 uh, Drupal 7 modules that are out there in this community contrib land um, and 
they are obsoleted by gone. or either they're handled or they're obsoleted by Drupal 8 core. So, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Right. So, Drupal 8 is sleek and powerful. Check it out. Bam. All taken care of within Drupal core. Um, so, it's a powerful system. It makes it much easier to, to manage. Um, and using the language first approach, it helps your contrib work uh, and your extension, your custom extension within your own site uh, be much more uh, powerful and stable on the multilingual front. And this was made possible by the fact that we had this wonderful initiative and Gabor yeah, is here you. who helped uh, spearhead <laughs> that and we thank you very much. But as, as we know, this was a huge uh, joint effort between 1,500, I don't know what the count is at the moment, but more yeah. than 1,000 people have been involved specifically in the D8MI, you know, so Drupal 8 multilingual initiative that have helped out in adding uh, patch reviews, adding code, testing, uh, UX, you know, all aspects. Um, you do not have to be a coder to help out with that type of project. Um, and we welcome you definitely to, to, to take part in that. Um, but it's been a huge thing. It's been, um, in my opinion, in many people's opinion, one of the most successful initiatives in Drupal 8. Yes. And um, I was very happy to be, we, we both were very happy to be part of that. It's still going, Wednesdays. So. Yes, this, this Wednesday is still going. Wednesday mornings. Yeah. All right. And how can you learn more? There's lots of resources out here. You're here at DrupalCon. You're here in this room. Um, that's amazing. So we've had boffs and sessions. But you can also go to groups.drupal.org uh, for both the internationalizations and the translations uh, groups if you'd like to join. Um, join the, the, um, IR, the IRC meeting for our multilingual initiative meeting. Um, Check Drupal.org docs. There's a whole bunch of information there, the multilingual guide. Um, and uh, I, would, I'm, I would like to be more involved to make sure the Drupal 8 documentation is, is stronger. Um, and that's a big uh, win if we get that stronger as well for adoption. Oh. I'm bigger than I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> so also there's a, a, so in Drupal you can make um, distributions, install profiles to showcase, you know, for people to leverage or also to showcase functionality. And one thing that um, Amy and I and, and some other of the Hook42 team, Jeff and, and, yes. uh, and others um, and Gabor have Fair helped enough. out with is to uh, make a, a, a little demo um, install profile. So if you want to check out some of the features of multilingual and how they're configured, you can go to drupal.org slash project multilingual underscore demo. And you, can, you don't have to install it locally. There's a link on there. You can do simply test me. You click there. It builds it for you. It's all you know, in the cloud. It's awesome. And then you can go and click around and see how things were built. That is a very, very simple site. But it gives you an idea of menus and blocks and, and content views. and views and all sorts of things. Another thing is um, for the D8 in my project, um, Gabor has made this um, great landing site, basically this um, showcase site that will showcase um, tickets that we want, you know, issues in the issue queue we, we want to focus on. Talks about the, you know, involvement from the community and who's working on things. And um, I, does that one also have the um, examples of sites in the wild, yeah, that are actually using Drupal 8, things like that. So um, that's a great place to be, and there's also a Twitter account as well. So on that note, any questions? And if you do, come to the mic. Okay. <laughs> Anyone does have any questions? I know it's end of the day, people are tired, they want to go to dinner, but just use a microphone or we'll yell it out and we'll repeat it. We were so clear. You're so, so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what's for dinner? <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Oh, before I forget, uh, sprints Friday and this weekend, if you're around, would be great. And if you could uh, do the feedback on the session, even if it's bad, that's okay. Go ahead and uh, go to the, to the 
the page itself where the session is and you can provide feedback there. All right, thank you.